What's up, sons? It's Blindrod with Son of a Tech once again. It's been a long time. I've been focusing on streaming over on twitch.tv slash blindrod. And that's daily at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time to 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Link will be in the description below. I hope you go check it out. That being said, today we're going to be talking about an all AMD competitive gaming rig. And there's a few reasons for that. One, just parts availability. Two, we have new graphics cards coming out. So we had a situation where somebody was wanting to build a PC, something competitive for Call of Duty Warzone, CSGO, and that sort of thing, but as well as not spend a ton on the graphics card so that they could upgrade it here in the near future. So without further ado, let's get into the build. Okay, so first of all, we have the heart of the build, which is gonna be the motherboard. We went with the new B550 chipset, which is actually specifically going to be an MSI mag motherboard. Now they started this mag branding and that's because there is a brand new monitor with the same branding that's super awesome as well. And it's a fast IPS 240 Hertz panel. The same panel is in the monitor that we used for this build as well. And we'll discuss that when we get to it. It is the Tomahawk version and the motherboard's pretty slick. I definitely highly recommend taking a look at it. There is an argument for X570 to B550. The pricing's really, really weird now. And I'd like to give you guys like a dead set, go get this kind of thing. That being said, we can't because of the way pricing's working. If you see a good X570 motherboard and depending on the CPU you're going with, you may want to move towards X570. But for this particular build, we have the B550. It did give me a good experience with the B550 chipset and I was happy to be able to build with one because I haven't built with one yet. Moving on, we have the AMD Ryzen 3700X and that's pretty standard. We, we need to get a little bit into the reasoning for that choice. We could go higher, right? So we could say, well, if we're doing content creation or something along those lines, 3900, 3950X, right? But if you take a look at the benchmarks and if you're doing a performance gaming rig that's going to have an AMD CPU and not an Intel CPU, i.e. like the 9900K or the 10700K, which would get you the tip top of the frames that you could possibly get, you're going to want to actually look a little bit lower down the line on the AMD side because you're going to get better top end frames out of the 3700X and 3800X over the 3900 and 3950X where the added cores will kind of degrade the the single IPC or the single core clock in some games. This mostly comes into play at least in my experience when I've been testing in games like CSGO, of course, and then Hyperscape, which is new battle royale for Ubisoft, I noticed that it was functioning this way as well. And so if you're looking for purely gaming, and even if you're adding in some content creation like live streaming or something along those lines, and you're not doing any heavy rendering, I still would say go with the 3700X for that nice little sweet spot. Now, if you're on the budget end, obviously just get the 3600 or the 3600X. But in this case, we wanted the peak performance that we could get with an all AMD rig. So we went with the 3700X. Now to pair that off, you want to keep in mind that memory is going to be very important not as important as it was for generation one of ryzen or generation two because generation three has gotten a little bit better with memory compatibility and that sort of thing but i still err on the side of safety when i'm choosing my memory and i always go with the g skill trident z neo it's made for amd 3600 megahertz right out of the box bam you're ready to go you plug it in add the docp profile in your set you don't really have to do anything easy performance gain one setting in the bios and you're done right so go ahead and check out the g skill trident z neo sometimes it's a little harder to get your hands on but keep your eyes out for it and if you're going to be building an amd rig where you're wanting all the frames you can get out of it i highly recommend this memory we're going to be pairing it of course with a radeon gpu and there's been kind of a bumpy road uh, with Radeon as of late and I think this has kind of just been something that everybody's aware of however some of the drivers now have gotten much much better and if you're looking at some of the more popular titles like Call of Duty Warzone, CSGO, Rainbow Six Siege and now even some AAA story titles that are starting to come out they are getting more and more optimization for both Ryzen and Radeon and in a lot of cases both Ryzen and Radeon together 
you are going to be foregoing the RTX, but in this case for a competitive rig, we're not really looking for ray tracing yet. We're more looking for the most frames for the best price. And when you take the cost of the Radeon 5700 XT and you compare it to the other options from the green team, you start to see that you're getting more frames out of the Radeon GPU. You're also getting cheaper monitor options at higher refresh rates with FreeSync over having to also get the G-Sync compatibility. Now in this particular case, like I alluded to, we are going with a monitor that supports both G-Sync and FreeSync. And in most cases these days, most monitors, if they're brand new off the shelf, are gonna support both. But there are still some cheaper value monitors that will support FreeSync at like 144 Hertz and be a lot cheaper without the G-Sync compatibility marking on it. So keep that in mind. The particular card we went with was the Sapphire Nitro Plus. It's a clean looking card, triple fan, very large to so make sure you have a case to accommodate for it. And it has a two, not, not a single eight pin and one six pin like the reference models, but it has two eight pins. Now it also has an RGB connector so you can sync that up with your motherboard and they've really thought through things. The trick software has also come a long ways and there is a good debate between Sapphire and XFX once again. Whereas with the 580 series we did notice that there are some issues with some of the Sapphire series as far as cooling and I've denoted that way way back this has been years now and I think that that's been resolved for the most part. I highly recommend it. The back plate looks good and you got some really nice RGB coloring going on with it. Now to store everything, we have the Sabrent Rocket PCIe 4.0 because why not get triple the speeds of PCI 3.0 drives, whether or not you're gonna be using it or not, right? So I think you should just go ahead and get, you know, something that's gonna be the fastest it's currently out. You're gonna slightly future-proof yourself. And these drives are awesome. We're talking 6,000 megabytes per second read and write and I, I love them. I've been running them in pretty much everything now. The cost isn't too terrible. You know, you're talking about under $200 for a one terabyte drive. So go check that out. Now, finally, to power it all, we have the EVGA Supernova 850 watt power supply. It's overkill for this build. I also am not a big fan of EVGA, but like I said, supply issues, so on and so forth. This is what we ended up with. So. It's fully modular. You can get cable mod ca cables if you want. We went with the cable mod or the cable extensions. These cable extensions you can get from a company called Asian Horse of the Amazon website, and they're pretty cheap. And you can swap them out. You know, it, I like them because I always end up with a couple extras, whether it's an extra six pin or an extra eight pin. And later I just kind of have some laying around to clean up random budget builds or for rebuilds for reselling type thing. So you can go ahead and check those out too. To cool the processor, we did go with an NZXT all-in-one cooler. I know, I'm the guy that always says you either air cool or you go custom cooling. But in this particular case, I did decide to do this because we actually have a matching case, which is the NZXT 710i, so the H710i. And I kind of just wanted everything to be matching as far as that goes. We're able to sync up the lights a lot easier that way. The 710i does come with an RGB controller already ready to go. So you just hook that up to the motherboard, hook all your fans up, hook the cooler up, and it just takes over, right? You don't have to go in and mod a whole bunch of different stuff and blah, 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 and find different like adapters. Everything just plugs in, right? I have the NZXT fans and the NZXT cooler and the NZXT case with the NZXT <laughs> RGB strips. And so you can, it makes it really easy. It just makes it really easy to clean up the build. It looks nice and you don't have to really add in any additional work or adapters or anything like that. So the build went together really, really clean and really, really easy. And then we got to testing in some benchmarks. I did very light benchmarks. I didn't do a ton. They're all up on a live stream over on twitch.tv slash blind run. If you want to look into more detail, I'll put a link to the VOD down below. To give you an idea of where we were at with everything, we were over 240 frames a second in Hyperscape and CSGO, as well as Rainbow Six Siege. So all of those were passing with flying colors. When we were talking about any late later AAA titles, story games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 
Far Cry New Dawn, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. All of those were, were 60 frames and up with settings maxed out at 1080p. We tested at 1080p because the panel we went with was going to be a 1080p or is a 1080p panel. 1080p, 240 hertz IPS panel. This one in particular is the Alienware one, which uses the same panel as the MSI MAG uh, 251. You can currently still get the Alienware one at Best Buy, and I'm also rocking that for my personal rig, and I highly recommend it. The only advantage you get with the MSI is going to be support for HDR, which when we're talking about competitive gaming, we're A, not super interested in, and B, you're usually gonna give up a little bit of something. And the fact is, is the way they implemented the HDR is not true HDR. So yes, it looks a little bit better, but it's not true HDR and they're out of stock. So go ahead and go with the Alienware if you want something right now. It's gonna be a $400 monitor, $399. And that's going to include G-Sync compatibility, as well as FreeSync 2 compatibility, 240 hertz refresh rate, and a one millisecond response time. In testing, it was around three milliseconds response time, and it works best on PC, but you will get a little bit faster of a response time on the consoles at 60 hertz than you would with some other options like your television so I wouldn't recommend it for consoles but there is a note there that from what I've heard you get faster response times on the MSI at 60 Hertz on console so um, do with that what you will maybe wait for the mag 251 from MSI it would pair really well with that B550 motherboard too uh, the 3700X was performing pretty good. We did test with the stock paste on the NZXT Kraken cooler, and the stock paste was pretty dried up. We were getting um, thermal throttling at 90C, which was knocking our clocks back down to about 4.1 gigahertz when we were running IDA64 with FPU enabled. So. We went ahead and replaced the thermal paste. Typically I would do that no matter what, but I wanted to test the paste on the Kraken cooler to give you guys an idea of would I be able to just slap it on without paste. In my humble opinion, that's gonna be no. The answer is no. Go ahead and replace the paste as soon as you get it. We dropped the temperatures 10 degrees Celsius, removed that thr thermal throttling, and had that CPU staying up between 4.2 and 4.4 gigahertz at all times, which is fantastic. With that, like I said, we got really good benchmarks. The Cinebench was around 4,400, and that's the R20 Cinebench. And I'm really, really happy with the build. Everything went together in under two hours. Everything posted immediately, and all the games played as expected with high performance and so on. So Call of Duty is the only competitive title that was under 240 frames a second. And even and that's with you know settings turned down 1080p and we we're in between a minimum was around 150 frames per second and it would go up to around 210 frames a second in the gulag and guli you were looking at about 220 frames a second and that's for a GPU that's you know under $400 so pretty good stuff hope you guys enjoyed this build video if you did don't forget to leave a like and comment and subscribe and encourage me to do more build videos. We're also gonna do an individual review of the NZXT case, so make sure you let me know if you're interested in that and if you wanna see it, hit that sub and the notification bell. Really, that notification bell will get you there. And come check me out on twitch.tv slash blindrun. We're playing a lot of Hyperscape right now. Until then, I will see you next Tuesday.